Alright, so now we have piecewise functions. And just like it sounds, our functions are going to be in pieces. So, for example, f of x is defined as x minus 2, then we have a comma, which you may also see the word if, or when, or something like that. Uh, x is less than 0, and f of x is defined to be x squared plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So, that means when we have any numbers that are less than 0, uh, then we use this part of the function to evaluate it. And any number greater than 0 fits into this category, and so we use this part of the function to evaluate it. Functions can be defined in uh, um, two pieces, three pieces, multiple pieces. Uh, so, but anyways, we're just trying to get the concept down right now. All right, so if this is f of x, how do you find f of negative 4? Well, your x value is negative 4. And so we go over here to our, our definition of our function, and we say, all right, where does negative 4 fit in? This situation, the x less than 0 situation, or the x greater than or equal to 0 situation? Well, negative 4 is definitely less than 0, so it falls here, which means we need to use x minus 2 when we evaluate the function. So we would say equals negative 4 minus 2. And so f of negative 4 is just the number negative 6. You do not take negative 4 and plug it into both parts of the function and get negative 6 in the top and what is that, 16, 17 in the bottom and say, well, the instructor will choose the, the right one. No, 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 that's not how it works. Make sure that you use the proper piece of the function that you need to. All right, so f of 0. Now we say, all right, where's 0 fit in? So 0 is certainly not less than 0, so we can't use the first part. Uh, 0 is greater than or equal to 0, so there's the equal part. So yes, it fits in down here, which means we use x squared plus 1. So that's going to say 0 squared plus 1. I'm just writing everything in so you can see where it's coming from, and that just goes to 1. So f of 0 is just the number 1. And then f of 3, uh, 3 fits into which part? The top piece or the bottom piece? All right, everybody see it fits into the bottom piece because 3 is certainly greater than 0. So we would have 3 squared plus 1, which gives us 10. So f of 3 is equal to 10. So that's how you, you evaluate piecewise functions. This part right here tells you when you can use this piece of the function. This part here tells you when you can use this piece of the function, so forth and so on. Okay, so that's the idea on, on evaluating. So now how about graphing? All right, so let's graph this function. Now the way I like to do these things um, is in parts. Okay, so we're going to graph the first part, which is x minus 2, and then graph the second part. So I'm going to come over here and say, all right, first part. And that would be f of x equals x minus 2. Now, back over in our piecewise function, our graph changes from x minus 2 to x squared plus 1 at z when x is 0. So something happens at 0. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the value of this function is right here, this first part, when x is equal to 0, even though we're not allowed to use it. Okay, you'll see what I'm getting at in just a second. So we say, all right, let's find f of 0, which in this case would be negative 2. For this part right here, for the first part of the function, if f of x is x minus 2, then f of 0 would be negative 2. That's the ordered pair 0 comma negative 2, which is down here. Now, since we're not even allowed to use 0 for this first part, this point 0, 2 has to be an open circle. And what that means is that ordered pair is not included. We're allowed to use this part, x minus 2, for any number less than 0. So say like f of negative 1. Well, it's f of negative 1 f of negative 1 would be negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. So that's the ordered pair, negative 1, negative 3, which would be down here. That's a negative 1. All right, and f of x equals x minus 2, that's a line. <coughs> so we have these two points. Draw out your line like such. So that open circle that we put on the graph says that, okay, that point, 0 comma negative 2 is not included, but then this line here, every point, every point, every ordered pair on that line up to the point 0 comma negative 2 is included. So that's why it's important to figure out, even though we're not allowed to use 0 for this first part, we need to figure out what the point would be if we were allowed to use it. And then if we're not allowed to use that specific x value, then you just put a little open circle. Okay? All right, so now let's look at the second part. And that would be f of x equals 
x squared plus 1. So again, we want to see what's happening at the x value where things change, which is in this case 0. No, it's not always going to be 0. Okay, but in this case it is. So x squared plus 1. So f of 0 is equal to 1. All right, so this is the ordered pair 0, comma 1, which would be right there. Now the question is, are we allowed to use this point? Is this point part of our graph? Yeah, because we're allowed to use 0 for the second part of our function here, and so that ordered pair is definitely included, and so we'll put a little dot. All right, so now we're allowed to use, to use the second part, we're allowed to use any number greater than 0. So go find what's f of 1 f of 1 would be 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. So we'd have 1, 2. And we know that f of x equals x squared plus 1. We know that's, that's a parabola, right? So it's really just going to be the second half of our parabola. It's going to kind of go up like such. You can go find more ordered pairs. You know, f of 2 would be 5, so forth and so on. We're try just trying to get a general idea of what the sketch would look like. And so this right here is the sketch of our piecewise function. Notice, yes, it's in pieces, just like the function itself was in pieces. Everybody understand why this point down here, uh, 0, comma, negative 2, uh, is not in included uh, because we weren't even allowed to use 0, and everybody understand that if we accidentally made that included, that it would not be a function because it would not have passed the vertical line test. All right, so we just need to be... Be very careful of um, when the point is included and when the order pair is not included. Let's try another one. All right, sketch f of x equals 6 minus x when x is less than or equal to 3, and 3x minus 6 when x is greater than 3. So again, I'm going to do this first part, second part thing. So the first part would be f of x equals 6 minus x. All right, now what is the x value where things change from one graph to the other graph? Well, in this case, it's a 3. Everybody see that? Things change when x gets when our x values get to 3. All right, so we're going to find what happens for this first part when x is 3. Well, you get 3 again. So that's the ordered pair of 3, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And that would be right there. And I'm putting in a point because we're allowed to use 3, right, for this first part. So when x is 3, y is 3, then that order pair we're allowed to use. All right, so the graph of 6 minus x, y equals 6 minus x, is a line. So let's find another point. So we're allowed to use numbers less than 3. So what's f of 0? f of 0 would be 6. So 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six. We have that point right there. So connect the dots like such. So when our x values are to the left of three, less than three, then the graph of our function looks like the line six minus x, which it does. Okay. So now let's do the second part. Okay. F of x equals three x minus six. All right, so again, let's figure out what's going on at 3, even though we're not allowed to use 3 for this, for this one down here. All right, so that would be 3 times 3 minus 6, which is 9 minus 6, which is also 3. So we get the order pair 3 comma 3 again, which is already being used from the first part. All right, so we have a situation here where the point's included from the first part of the function, but not included from the second part of the function. Well, included always rules. All right, so... Since this point's already included here, then even though it's not supposed to be included for this bottom part, we're just going to leave it included. You don't put a circle around it or anything like that. You just leave it as the point that it is. All right? And now let's go find another x value. It's to the right, so we want f of 4, which would be uh, 12 minus 6, which would be 6. So when we're out here at 4, we're also up here at 6. And again, y equals 3x minus 6 is a line, so we're just going to connect the dots like such. And there you go. And there's the graph of f of x, done again in pieces. And this one is connected, whereas the previous one was not connected. All right, so that's it for evaluating and graphing piecewise functions. Uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.